Welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Donna Chavis, today, and I am here with Jewish believer Scott Folk. Scott, how are you? Donna, so great to be with you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, good to see you, and thank you for being here. Uh, this, is, this is a subject that's pretty near and dear to our hearts around here, mm. and that is Israel. That's what yeah. we're going to talk about today. And I know that you, you came to faith in 1975. You went to school after that. You started after that into full-time ministry. But Scott, in 2005, you took a tour group for the first time to Israel. What happened? Yeah, well, it's quite remarkable, Donna, when, when I think back to the fact that I was raised in a Jewish home. Mm -hmm. I was saved at a very young age, but I, I was without a heart for Israel. Because as I was growing up, I saw many people that aligned themselves with Israel ended up being non-Jewish people who felt like they needed to somehow act like they were Jewish mm -hmm. to get God's approval. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't love the Jewish people any more than He loves any other person. He loves the world. That's why the Lord sent His Son. God so loved the world. But there's a call on Israel that I didn't recognize until this trip. And something significant happened as, as a pastor of a local church, it was my very first time leading a group of people to Israel. And one of the things we did when we were on the ground over there is we not only saw all of the amazing sites, but we wanted to serve. So we spent an yes. afternoon yes. at an underprivileged children's center. It was a small group. We were bearing Hanukkah gifts for these mm -hmm. kids and something that I wasn't expecting happened to me and it, it absolutely changed my life. As, as we walked in and I saw these kids, 15 children from the poorest families in Tiberias, 15 kids, and as I looked at their faces, tears filled my eyes because mm. I heard in my heart and in my head that scripture where Jesus says, and as much as you've done it to the least of these brothers of mine, right, right. you've done it to me. And for the first time in my life, I recognized these were literally the mm. least of Jesus's Jewish brothers and Jewish sisters. Mm -hmm. And it was then in 2005 that the Lord put on my heart to start a ministry that would funnel funds to the poor and needy in Israel, both Arab and Jew. And that was 2005. Right, right. And since then, the Lord has done incredible, incredible work in my heart where I, Israel's concerned. And I know for you, that wasn't just a, um, a one-time visit for you. It wasn't just a great experience, but you actually started feeling a call on your heart yeah. to raise awareness and to be involved uh, with, with, with the things in Israel. Well, this is the remarkable thing for me. As a local pastor, I'd never once preached on Israel. As a matter of fact, I traveled around the world with Dr. Michael Brown, one of the mm -hmm. foremost messianic mm -hmm. apologists right. in right. the world. And anytime he would speak on Israel, I was like, dude, talk about something that's more relevant, that's mm -hmm. gonna reach me. But in 2010, I was flying back from Israel. So I, I started taking annual trips to Israel. In 2010, I'm flying back from Israel. And I had one of the most significant encounters with the Lord that I've ever had. I was flying back and it was as if the Lord was sitting right next to me, pointing his finger at me saying, Scott, you're a Jew. And I've called you to the law sheep mm. of the house of Israel. And something remarkable happened in my heart, Donna. I wasn't expecting it. It was almost as significant as the 2005 encounter. Yes. Here we were giving money to Israel every year. Mm -hmm. The Jewish believers mm -hmm. in Israel, the Arab believers in Israel, the poor and needy in Israel. And as that was growing, we were giving more and more. And then in 2010, I had this encounter with the Lord on the flight back from Israel and something happened in my heart. As soon as I landed back in Charlotte, I went and I told Dr. Brown, I was pastoring the congregation at fire then. I said, bro, Something's happened in my heart. I got in touch with every major Jewish leader that I knew, including Sid Roth, Jonathan Burnus, mm -hmm. all of these guys who were my friends. I said, listen, what's the Lord saying to me? And I knew that I needed to devote my, the rest of my life yes. to really giving to Israel and to uh, being a voice in the yeah. church yeah. that would talk about God's heart for Israel. So here, it's kind of remarkable. Cornelius was giving in Acts chapter 10. It's, it's, it's a crazy thing. He was giving. And then as a result of his giving, the Lord allows Peter to come and his whole household gets saved and filled with mm -hmm. the Spirit. Mm -hmm. As a Jew, I kind of felt like I had a Cornelius moment right there on the plane because as I was giving, 
I felt like God wanted to really, really bless me. Mm. So not only was I giving naturally, now my heart was transformed mm -hmm. to really understand and to embrace God's heart for Israel in a supernatural way. My life has never been the same. <laughs> I never want to go I backwards. <laughs> and I just really believe that God is doing something so significant in the church where Israel is concerned. And when the church grabs hold of that mm. Israel piece, everything else will fall into place and we'll fulfill our destiny mm -hmm. as to what God wants us to be as a church. Well, I definitely want to talk to you today and while we're here about some specifics about Israel. But you know, the, the eyes of the world have always been on Israel and it seems like there's always something, someone, <laughs> some either spiritual or natural thing that's always wanting to wipe Israel off the face of the planet. Isn't that crazy? Why, what is that? What, why is that? Well, uh, when you in look, two minutes, in two <laughs> minutes, when you look back to the Garden of Eden, where the Lord said, you can eat of any tree except this one, Adam and Eve partook of the other tree, the forbidden fruit and instituted death because they ate it. The Lord said, surely you will die. But the Lord needed to reverse mm -hmm. that curse of death. So he was looking for people. He prophesied to the, to the serpent in the garden, there's one coming that's gonna crush your head. So the Lord was looking for a people through whom he could mm -hmm. send that messianic figure that would turn the tide of death around and, and conquer sin and death. Obviously that was Jesus, Yeshua. And when he found the man, Abraham, he made a promise to Abraham that through you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Yeah. And as soon yeah. as God found that man, yeah. all forces of hell were against that nation because the devil knew that the one coming that was gonna crush his head was coming through a Jewish seed. And that's why from the beginning of time, I believe that Satan has been out to totally and completely annihilate Israel, wipe it off the map. So whether it's biblical history, Haman, Herod, Pharaoh, all wanted to eradicate the Jewish people. Right, right. Whether it's modern history where mm -hmm. you've got nations mm -hmm. that saying Israel should be wiped off the map. Until Yeshua, Jesus returns as the Prince of Peace, there's gonna be this diabolical hatred against Israel. And that's why the church needs to be standing strong in prayer and in support for the nation of Israel. Yes, yes. Well, I want you to stay with us and I want you to stay with us. We're gonna be back in just a moment with more uh, with Scott Volk and we're gonna be still talking about Israel, so don't miss it. Welcome back to Something More. I'm your host, Donna Chavez, and I'm here with Scott Volk. Scott, tell me, how important is it for the church, as believers, to really just to, to wake up where Israel is concerned. Uh, the remarkable thing is biblically, the Bible says that the Lord has placed a partial blinder over Israel mm. where the Messiah is concerned. So there's this God ordained partial blindness where Israel's concerned because of their rejection of Jesus. I firmly believe Donna, there's a demonically imposed blindness over the eyes of the church yeah. where Israel is concerned, because when we get Israel, then everything changes where the church is concerned. Yeah. If I, as a Jewish pastor, <laughs> could have preached thousands of messages over the course of my life without even considering Israel, how much more is it possible that non-Jewish mm -hmm. pastors and, and churchgoers could, could attend a church mm -hmm without ever grabbing hold of the Israel peace. I have four adult children and one, one younger child. When, when my wife and I were 44, the Lord surprised us with a, with a, with a child. <laughs> surprise. So, surprise, exactly. <laughs> so she's nine years old now, but when she was four, we were sitting in our living room, we were getting ready to put her to bed. And we had this little puzzle that we would put together with her. And it, it was a, like a jigsaw puzzle, but the parts were, the pieces were big. And we got it almost all done. And the lower left-hand corner of the puzzle, it was missing one piece. So we said, Olivia, let's just, we're just gonna go to bed. No, I can't go to bed until we finish this puzzle. And we had no idea where the piece of this puzzle was. So my wife, Beth, ran upstairs, started looking everywhere in the room, found the piece amazingly and mm -hmm. brought it down, gave it to Olivia. And Olivia put the piece in the puzzle and she said, now I can go to bed, the puzzle is complete. Mm. Well, what I think is going on in the church is we're going to bed without finishing the puzzle. We don't even right. realize right. that there's a missing piece 
a missing part of our family. You know, one of the things that we value as a family is sitting down at a dinner to, together at the table. And yes, if one seat is empty, we're not gonna start because somebody's not there yet. We're gonna wait for them to come. If, 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 if one of our kids is not in the car as we're leaving to go on vacation, we're not gonna go, well, let's just leave, they'll find their way. There. No, we realize something's missing and I believe for the church, it's imperative that we need to realize that mm -hmm. our Jewish brothers are missing from the table. They're yes. missing, that there's yes. a seat in the car that's empty yes. because the gospel is to the Jew first and also to the nations. Romans 1 16, an amazing verse says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God to salvation for all those who believe to the right. Jew first right. and also to the Greek. If the gospel is to the Jew first, why is it missing? in our churches today. Yeah. We need to wake up, Donna. We need to realize, listen, we need to be going to Israel. We need to be loving Israel. We need to be loving them by showing them compassion, mm -hmm. but we also mm -hmm. need to be loving them by giving them the gospel. The greatest love that yes. we can give yes. to Israel is letting them know that their yes. Messiah came. And we would not have, we as the church, would mm -hmm. not have a relationship with the God of Israel if it wasn't for the people right. of Israel. So right. I believe the church has a debt to Israel yeah. where the gospel is concerned. We need to wake up to need that. Need to wake up. And talk to me a little bit about the, the heart of God uh, toward and for Israel. Yeah. It's not based on what they do or don't do. No. which You is said it's based on covenant. It's based on covenant. And actually, God's heart to the nations is not based on what they do or what they don't do. You know, the Bible says in John 3, 16, which we alluded to earlier, God so loved the world, the world. that he sent mm -hmm. his son. And that world right. wasn't, and he didn't love them because they were loving him. He loved them first. Right. That's why he sent his son. And where Israel is concerned, they weren't chosen because they were a great nation. They were chosen because God saw something in Abraham and gave Abraham a covenant, and a, mm. a, a unilateral, unconditional, everlasting covenant in Genesis 12 and 15 and 17 and 18. God speaks to Abraham and he says, I'm gonna give you a son and through him, all the nations of the right. earth will be blessed. And God has never rescinded that, that, that covenant. No, he's never mm -hmm. rescinded the covenant. Unfortunately, within the church, there are many people even behind yeah. pulpits saying that God has rescinded that covenant. But as a church, we will forever have a debt to Israel. And that debt needs to be paid back through our prayers, through our giving, mm -hmm. through our mm -hmm. burden to see the lost mm -hmm. sheep of the house of Israel brought into our dinner celebration, our, right. our family. And you take it even a little bit further. I was looking on your website, uh, preparing for this program, and you had a, a list of some things that you, as a, as a person, as a minister, as an organization that you believe, and you said, we believe that we can't even fulfill our full destiny as believers if we don't carry God's heart for Israel. I believe, wow. yeah. Uh, mm. Well, it, it, it's remarkable to me that Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he wept over Jerusalem, not because it was an ugly city, not because of any other reason than because these people rejected him as Messiah. Paul, the, the, the apostle to the Gentiles and right. the great Jewish apostle in Romans 9, 10, and 11 had this unceasing sorrow and grief in his heart. Yeah. He was radically saved. He, he's, the, he's the same apostle that talks about joy and living in joy, yes. yet he had this grief yes. because part of his mm -hmm. heart was not totally and completely satisfied because Israel had not yet bowed their knee to the Messiah. Mm -hmm. If Paul, as the apostle to the Gentiles, could have this great grief, if Jesus could have this great grief, and God the Father throughout scriptures calls Israel my people, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. people, my, let my people go. I mm -hmm. love my people mm -hmm. with an everlasting love. And even offers a blessing Specifically, if you bless Israel, yeah. you you will be blessed, those that bless Israel. Yeah, I don't think our motivation for ever doing anything should be to get something back. Right. But <laughs> the fruit of doing something often mm -hmm. is, and especially when we honor God, the fruit of, of honoring God is blessing. And there's no other people that in scripture that he said to bless outside of Israel. Well, he, t he calls us to bless one another, but yes. as far as a nation, yes. as far as a nation and yes. as far as being blessed, there's not, God doesn't say, if you bless America, I'll bless you. Right. And, and God doesn't even say pray for America. Yeah. We should be praying for America. Right. 
There's one city in scripture that the Lord says to pray for, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They will prosper who love you. So even in our praying for them, there's a blessing that comes yes, back to yes. us. Boy, I'm so glad about that. Yeah. Well, I want you to stay with us. And I know some of you may be a little like I was and uh, not really know what I should be doing. You may be saying, you know, I don't really know much about Israel. I've never been to Israel. I may never go to Israel. What can I do? What is my part? When we come back, Scott's going to tell us exactly what our part should be. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Something More. We are having quite a time learning all about Israel and some of the biblical uh, reasons behind things with Scott Volk. Scott, thank you for being with us. I know we've got a few minutes left and I wanted to talk to the folks at home. You talk about some practical ways that, that we can help, that we can do something. What can people do? And I, I love it when, when everything starts with the same letter. You've, yeah. got, <laughs> you've got four P's here, so that's easy to remember. Yeah. Let's talk about provoke. Yeah, there's <laughs> actually four P's and they start with P and R. We'll do provoke oh, that's first. That's true. Provoke, proclaim, provide, and pray. So mm -hmm. let's talk about provoke first. And I'd, I'd really love to chat with you directly here. You know, the Bible says that salvations come to the nations to provoke Israel to jealousy. And if you're a believer in Jesus in Yeshua, God has a mandate on your life that part of the reason you're saved is to provoke Israel to jealousy. And Donna, when we think about this, this is crazy because through the ages, unfortunately, the church has not provoked Israel to jealousy. Yeah, right. They've provoked them to anger. Do you know that the sign of the cross to a Jewish person is not, it doesn't mean the same thing as it does to people who call themselves Christians because the sign of the cross was actually on the shields of the crusaders mm. as they march through Jerusalem and, and not only rid Jerusalem of the Muslim infidels, but they decided to get the people who they called the Christ killers, march right. them into right. a synagogue, lock the synagogue up, burn it down with them in it while singing a Christian hymn. So the cross to an unsaved Jew is the sign of our enemy. And we as the church are called to provoke Israel to jealousy. And I encourage you who are watching, let's ask the Lord, how can we be a provocation to Israel? There's so many things that we can do, but I think the first one is simply to ask the Lord, Lord, give me grace to love the people of Israel and yes. to carry God's heart for the people of Israel. Because as we talked about in the last segment, if we had the heart of God for Israel, then we would, we would want to be provoking them yes. to jealousy. If yes. I have a child yes. who's wayward, I don't want to push them away. I want to do everything I can to get that child to come home. And as the church, right. we have brothers and sisters in our family that aren't yet in our dinner right. celebration, right. which we talked about right. earlier. That's How right. can we get them there? We need to provoke them to yes. jealousy. So that's one of my favorite okay. PRs. Let's talk about PR, proclaim. Proclaim. Jeremiah 31 talks about proclaiming to the nation, speaking it out of your mouth. Oh Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. There's power in what we proclaim. So many, many times we start proclaiming things that aren't true, like about our natural situations. I'll never get better. I'm feeling mm -hmm. sick. I'm never going to get better. Words mm -hmm. are powerful. Jesus yes. came and proclaimed good news. That's what Yeshua did. And, and we as a people need to be proclaiming really what God's heart is where Israel is concerned. So as we provoke, we also need to be proclaiming, speaking out of our mouths, oh Lord, do for Israel what you promised. Proclaim to our neighbors and our church friends and believers around the Lord, God will save the people of Israel. Proclamation is a huge part of aligning ourselves with the I purposes agree. of God. Mm -hmm. I agree. And uh, while we were in break, you were telling me about this next one, a little story about this next one. Provide. Yeah. Provide. Providing is, this is one way that we can actually provoke Israel to jealousy mm -hmm. also. You know, when uh, the Apostle Paul would go to the nations of the world, giving the gospel and speaking in churches, mm -hmm. he would always go to the synagogues first, which was remarkable. Yes. But then he would go and he would receive offerings from churches in the nations and bring those offerings back to believers in Israel. So this PR provide, mm -hmm. I really believe is found, uh, the, the anchor verse for this is Romans 15, mm -hmm. verse 25 mm -hmm. to 27. And this is what it says. It says, Macedonia and Achaia, 
were pleased to give an offering to the saints in Jerusalem because they recognized not only do they have a spiritual debt to Israel, in other words, without Israel, they wouldn't be saved because the Messiah was Jewish, but they must also help in their material needs as well. As believers in Jesus, we are mandated by scripture to stand with Israel in a financial way. Yes. And, and you know, this is remarkable because millions and millions of dollars, Donna, are raised in the church for Israel, but very, very few of those dollars ever get into the hands of believers. Mm -hmm. And I wanna encourage all of you who are watching, when you give to Israel, make sure that those funds are getting into the hands of believers in the land of Israel because unbelievably, sometimes the church will give money to Israel and those funds will go to organizations that actually oppose believers in the land of Israel. This is very, very important yes. to me. Yes. And I know it's important to Sid as well that yes. the believers yes. in the land of Israel are supported by the churches of the nations. Yeah. Not so that they can drive bigger and better cars, but so that the gospel in mm -hmm. Israel will be mm -hmm. funded to see the gospel go Wonderful. to the Jew first and also to the nations. All right, we've only got a few seconds left, about a minute left, so I wanna make sure that we talk about the fourth one, pray, yeah. pray. Yeah, this is, this is a great one. Um, the Psalm says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They will prosper who love thee. Mm -hmm. And there's no other scripture in the Bible that talks about praying for a particular city. This one doesn't, it's mandated by God. Right. We have prayer meetings in churches all the times and we'll pray for our cities and yes. rightfully so. Yes. But God is looking for people who will pray for Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the city of the great King. It's the yes. city Amen. that Jesus rose from. It's the city that he's coming back to and it's the city from which he will establish mm -hmm. his eternal kingdom. Jerusalem is on the heart of God. It should be on the heart of his people as well. And that is something that we all can do. Scott, will you take just a moment? We've got just a few seconds left and pray for those that are watching before we leave. Yeah, Lord, I thank you for each person watching today. And Father, I pray the blessing of God on them, Lord, as they're watching this show, may you, Lord, encourage them as they give to Israel, as they pray for Israel, as they ask you for the heart, your heart for Israel, may you bless them. And Lord, for those who are believing you, for promises that are not yet fulfilled. I pray for courage and strength to come to them for as surely as you gave Abraham a son that you promised him, that's as surely as you will answer the cries and the promises that you've given to each of your children in Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much for joining us on Something More today. Hope you'll join us next time.